Now for our story. It was the last day of Bill Meade's custody suit. Peggy Douglas, on the witness stand, was submitting to the merciless examination of George Farnsworth, the Calvert's attorney, whose purpose was to falsely place the young girl in an unfavorable light, to create a doubt in the judge's mind which might influence his decision in the case. Aunt Mary's son, Randy Lane, and Lefty Larkin, the family's old friend, looked on helplessly, wishing there was some way they could protect Peggy, but powerless to do so. There was one person in the courtroom, however, who was thoroughly enjoying Peggy's unhappiness. Kit Calvert, who sat next to her stepmother, Jessie, holding the baby over whom the custody suit centered. Suddenly, in the midst of intense excitement, after an angry objection by McKillop, the crowd had gone silent. Why, what's the matter, Kit? Oh, Aunt Mary. So she did get here. And isn't that your little friend, Mrs. Fenner, with her? Yes, Jessie. It is Lisa Fenner. Aunt Mary's entrance with Lisa caused a general stir of curiosity as she walked quickly to the front of the room, whispered something to Angus McKillop, Bill's lawyer. Angus looked completely astonished, then walked over and spoke to Judge Willoughby, while Lisa Fenner seated herself quietly. Her dark eyes, large in her pale face, watched Aunt Mary anxiously. As if drawn by force of the younger woman's dependence on her, Aunt Mary looked around and sent Lisa a reassuring little smile. A smile whose warmth and friendliness was noted by Jesse Calvert with some surprise. Did you see that, Kit? That's odd. I didn't know Mrs. Fenner and Aunt Mary were friends. Well, apparently they are. But I wonder what she's doing here. Why would Aunt Mary... I'm sure I don't know, Jesse. Why don't you wait and find out? Don't worry. I wouldn't miss this for anything. Something's in the wind. The way Mary Lane comes dashing in goes straight up to McKillop. I'd certainly like to know what's up. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jesse, if you'll wait a minute, you'll find out everything you want to know. Goodness, kid. I don't see why you're so irritable. The case is obviously going your way. At least it is so far. You think so? Of course. You've nothing to be so grim about. If I were in your shoes, I... In view of certain unforeseen developments in this case, information which has only now reached this court... We hereby declare a recess of 15 minutes. Unforeseen developments? What do you think that could mean, Kit? How should I know? Well, I wonder why they're going out with the judge, Aunt Mary, and that Mrs. Fenner. And... Jesse, I can see for myself what's going on. Take the baby a moment, Jesse. Why? Of course, Kit, but where are you going? I, I've got to get some fresh air. I, I feel as if I'm suffocating. Well, run along, then. You do look rather pale. But don't go too far away. It looks as if something very interesting is about to happen. Yes, I'm sure of it. What's wrong with Kit, Jesse? Why is she... Well, uh... she just went outside for a minute, Ben. Baby all right? Is he all right? Well, what does it look like to you? Just the same dreadful thing to have to haul him down here. Upsets his whole routine. Well, Mr. Farnsworth seemed to think it would be effective. Wish to heaven Farnsworth would get over here and explain this delay. Well, I don't know the reason for it, but I'd certainly say Aunt Mary was the cause of it. Then. Hmm? Mary's coming in here late with that girl. Well, the poor woman. She's probably drummed up some nonsense or other just to stall around. Well, maybe, but I wouldn't underestimate Mary, Ben. You should really... Well, Mr. Calvert, this recess is rather a surprise. I was just saying the same thing to my wife, Farnsworth. Wonder what's up. Frankly, I haven't the faintest idea, but I wouldn't worry too much, Mr. Calvert. Can't be very important. <laughs> no, perhaps not. Well, it is mysterious, though. They're all going into this huddle. Uh, by the way, what happened to Miss Calvert? I hope she's not taking it too hard. Well, Kit does seem rather upset. She went out for breath of air. I'll tell her to be patient. It won't be long now. We've made an excellent showing so far. By the time I'm through questioning Miss Douglas... Frankly, Mr. Farnsworth, I'm surprised you can get by with that sort of thing. What do you mean? Well, the tactics you've been using with Peggy. Actually, she doesn't enter into the case at all, if you come right down to it. <laughs> well, you've heard of poetic license, haven't you, Mrs. Calvert? Mm, yes, but even so... Well, I if we can get a certain amount of material on the record, in between McKillop's objections, it's all to the good. It has its influence. I see. That's why I'm rather put out with this interruption. I was just beginning to hit my stride. So you were. The girl's testimony was quite damaging the way you brought it out. That's why I say you shouldn't worry. We've got them just where we want them. Oh, I suppose so, but, uh... Ben... <laughs> Hmm? Did you notice the girl who came in with Mary Lane? Girl? What girl? Oh, dark hair. Big eyes. Yes, I saw her. Look, Jesse, I'd like to talk to Farnsworth. This is no time for irrelevant observations. Well, maybe it's irrelevant, but why did she go out to the judge's office with Angus and Mary Lane? How should I know? I don't even know who she is. Oh, that's right. You weren't at home that day. At home that day? What are you talking about? Oh, nothing, Ben. Nothing at all. 
I was just thinking. I see they've come in again. Well, it'll be just a matter of minutes now. The door of the judge's chambers opened. Lisa Fenner remained standing just inside, talking earnestly to the judge and McKillop, while Aunt Mary went up to Peggy Douglas, took her niece's hand in hers. I'm sorry I couldn't be here first thing this morning, dear. The train was a little late. Oh, well, just as long as you did get here, Aunt Mary. I was so afraid you wouldn't. Even though Lefty and Randy were here, I missed you. You must have been very distressing for you. Oh, Aunt Mary, it was awful. The sarcastic way he smiled, the things he asked me, everybody would just have to think that there was something wrong between Bill and me. Oh, now, dear, you mustn't think that. The people in this neighborhood are all very fair. And most of them have known you all your life. Oh, but Aunt Mary, you don't know. The way he asked the question, I almost felt guilty myself. You know that feeling you get, even when you know yourself that nothing's wrong, but you realize that people are thinking there is. I do wish I could have been here. You couldn't have done anything yet, Mary. I could see Randy and Lefty, their faces. They were so unhappy, and I could tell they wanted to help me, but they couldn't. I just felt all alone and helpless up there. Well, don't worry, dear. It'll soon be over. I just wish I could go someplace and hide. All the lovely talks Bill and I used to have, his plans for the future, our picnics and canoe rides, found what made it seem like they were things we shouldn't have done. And the times Bill used to stop by to see you and perhaps visit a moment on his way home from Camp Downing, he made those times seem like, like secret meetings between us, something we were doing behind Kit's back. Now, now, dear, you've been wonderful up to now. Be brave just a little longer. I'll try. Aunt Mary. Yes, dear? I don't understand about Lisa. Why is she... I, I can't explain now, Peggy. All right. But it seems odd... She didn't even say hello to any of us. Now she's sitting up there by herself. Well, Lisa's not feeling very well, dear. I think it's better not to disturb her at the moment. Oh? Well, of course, Aunt Mary, whatever you say. But everything's so mixed up. My head aches, so. Aunt Mary, do you think I'll have to go back again? I'm so afraid I'll say something that'll make it all the worse for Bill. Well, don't worry about it, dear. Everything's going to be all right. I wish I could believe that. You must believe it, dear. Just trust me. I know what I'm saying. Oh, of course I trust you, Aunt Mary. Just that Mr. Farnsworth makes these ugly insinuations. I don't want to lose control, but I'm so afraid if it keeps up much longer, I might cry up on the stand. I'd hate to give him that satisfaction. Never mind, dear. You won't believe me. Court will please come to order. Your Honor... Mr. Farnsworth, with your permission, I am ready to continue questioning my witness, Miss Peggy Douglas. In just a moment, Mr. Farnsworth. Unfortunately, I must refuse your request. In view of information which has reached the court pertaining to evidence which cast an entirely new light on the facts of this case, we are going to depart from customary procedure at this time. But, Your Honor, I built up my... seated, Mr. Farnsworth. Judge Willoughby, I stand on my rights as attorney for the defense. Mr. Farnsworth, you are out of order. The decisions of this court stand, regardless of what you may or may not think. Now, Mr. McKillop. Yes, Your Honor. Are you ready to present your new testimony? That I am. Very well. You may call your witness to the stand. Gladly. Mrs. Lisa Fenner. Oh. Lisa Fenner. The name meant nothing to Ben Calvert, and he saw no connection between Kit's absence from the courtroom and Lisa's presence there. But I wonder, Ben, if you aren't soon to learn the connection that exists between your daughter and the young woman who is about to take the stand. <laughs> 